the Bluetooth device is really too pale. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another brand new video. In today's video we're going to have a look at the cockpit update in the iHads or integrated helmet and display sight system that Gaijin has recently implemented to the Apache helicopters. Here's the list of all Apaches that received the updated cockpit with the iHad system. Let's start off with the American YA-864, AH-64A both in the tech tree and premium Greek American slash Israeli pattern, the Swedish Attack helicopter system all received the basic cockpit, and all the D variants, including the American AH-64D, Westland AH Mark I, Japanese AH-64DJP, and the Israeli AH-64D Saraf all received the modernized cockpit. Now allow me to give you a basic explanation on how these cockpits actually are. Usually the basic cockpits on the AH-64As are mostly analog, and most of the instruments are physical and you can only see one MFD or multi-purpose display unit. With the engine rotor RPM and engine temperatures totally freezing and not working properly. This is quite common on some of the vehicles in the game. For example, the flap and slat indicator on the Tektri Mirage F1 is totally functional and has no issues. The premium C200 version on the other hand barely even tries to do anything. The modernized cockpit of the AH-64Ds on the other hand have a fully digital interface with some minor backup analog instruments just in case if something unusual happened. Hello, your computer is vital. For now, let's begin with the most fresh and new addition to the cockpit, the iHads, or the integrated helmet and display sighting system. This system is available on all the Apaches and the recent Battlehawk helicopter. Let's begin with the symbology of the system itself. But before we begin, I will put a disclaimer here. Please know that all of the information that is currently shown in this video are public and are all declassified information. Also, all of the informations here are relative to the video game War Thunder, and it does not resemble real life or DCS. Although I had to use their terminology to keep myself sane. Generally, the iHads in War Thunder has three modes, in which all of these three modes have minor differences in between them. We have the hover mode, the cruise mode, and what happens to be the transition mode. The hover mode is only shown while the helicopter is in the hover mode. Please note that this symbology is only available on simplified and mouse aim controls. We're actually pressing H actually does work. Gaijin, realistic di- What's the point of this thing anyway? Once you go outside of the hover mode, your sight will be switched to the transition mode. When you are stationary and you're not going above 39 knots, the transition mode will be your main source of information. After you go above 39 knots, the HMD switches to the cruise mode. The cruise mode shows you all the information you need for a cruise level flight. I will talk about them a little bit later, but for now, let's start with the universal symbols at the center. With the first one being the semi-diamond shaped symbol. This symbol shows the center line of your helicopter or where your helicopter's nose is. This is available on all sight modes. Up next is the line of sight reticle, shown as a full cross, which essentially shows the center of your sight system. This is also available on all sight modes. And then we have cued line of sight reticle, shown as a dotted cross. To put it simply, when you don't lock your camera towards a target or a position, it will show it to you as the Canon CCIP. And when you're locking your camera on somewhere or something, it will be able to show it without any kind of problems. For example, I'm locking on this enemy vehicle and this will show where my TADS is looking. Now you might actually notice there are a bunch of dots around the full cross. These are called queuing dots. This pretty much helps you find where the dotted cross is by giving you the direction using these four dots. Now allow me to demonstrate you by role-playing as the Dora the Explorer. This is the place where I put my sight. Oh no, I can't really find it. Do you know where to find this goddamn thing? Shut the f up, you Okay, it, it tells me it should go bottom and left. Okay, we go in bottom, oh, now we go left, oh, jackpot, we got him, yeah, mm. Jesus Christ. Now you might have noticed there is something on the bottom called FXD and sometimes it can be TADS, or TATS. This is the acquisition source status. In War Thunder, it is basically tell you what your TATS is doing. For example, if it's on TADS, it basically tells you that you're locking something with the camera system. If it is FXD, it shows that this camera is fixed on its position and it is not locking anything. This line that is wobbling around so much is the velocity vector. 
just simply imagine the helicopter from top. This line is the 2D representation of how fast and which direction the vehicle is heading relative to the main rotor mast. Now this across different modes have different limitations on what they can show. In hover mode, this thing is limited to 5 knots. In transition mode, this thing is limited to 38 knots. And in cruise mode, it just simply disappears. This dot will be the acceleration cube. This dot indicates the magnitude and direction of the aircraft's acceleration. Whatever that means. Honestly, I don't know what this wobbly thing is, so if you know it, please let me know in the comment section because eh, I'm kind of confused as hell. Okay, so in this section of the video, I'm just going to basically explain how this entire thing actually works. And I'm just going to basically start with this number. This is the altitude relative to the ground underneath you. Please note that the altitude indicator for both of these values are measured in feet. These are the altitude indicators from 0 to 200, and they are divided by 10 feet and 50 feet each time. So you have 50 feet here, 100 feet here, 150 feet here, and 200 here. And this entire tape thingy will be filled up once you reach the 200 feet. After the 200 feet, you do in fact realize that the tape does not exist anymore, and of course the LO thingy that was underneath this digit has also disappeared as well. Okay, so when you're under 200 feet and you see this LO, LO symbol, the altitude indicator basically shows the altitude with a very high detail. This is very good because sometimes when you're in a hover mode, you really want your helicopter to be as precise as possible. And honestly, this is a very nice addition to the game. Once you get outside of the transition mode or hover mode and get into the cruise mode, you will start to see the altitude relative to the sea level itself. Now, you might have actually noticed that there is a tiny arrow that is next to the altitude indicator thingy. This is basically your vertical speed indicator. It basically shows you how fast or how slow you are losing or gaining altitude. For example, right now I'm losing altitude. Right now I'm gaining altitude. Now I'm losing a lot of altitude. Now I'm gaining a lot of altitude. You know, it's pretty much simple and it helps you out on how to hover your helicopter. Now this entire altitude thingy basically helps you out quite a lot on how you can manage your altitude or your collective pitch in general. On the left side, you have the speed indicator and you have the rotor RPM on the top left. The helicopter speed indicator is shown in knots and it is slightly different than this number as it shows the helicopter's true speed at any direction. You see, the speed indicator in War Thunder only shows forward and backwards as positive and negative values respectively, and it does not consider the ascend or descend of the vehicle itself. The Apache's iHads on the other hand shows the speed on any direction including the vertical ascend and descend. Once you're above 210 knots, there will be a square around the speed indicator, which is uh, currently bugged and uh, hopefully Gaijin will fix this soon. The rotor RPM is on the top left side of your HUD. Once the RPM is at 98% or higher, there will be a square around the number giving you a warning on not to over rev the engines. In War Thunder, the Apache engines are totally immune to this problem. And even if they are not, I would still highly recommend you to not let this number go higher than 115%, at least for a prolonged amount of time. At the bottom left, you have the PHMD. This indicates what type of helmet mounted display you're currently using. PHMD is currently the helmet mounted display of the pilot, while the CHMD is for the gunner. And as of now, the gunner barely even has a cockpit, so eh, maybe in the future. Now let's have a look at this square section at the bottom center of our HMD. The biggest square is the Field of Regard, or FOR. These basically show you the sensor limitation of your camera system. The tiny square in the middle is basically showing you your current FOV within this camera system. Now when you lock on something, a dot starts to appear on this section. This is called queued line of sight dot. This makes it easier to identify that dot across as if these four dots wouldn't help you out already. Although I have to say sometimes the values can be a little bit unoptimized, but generally it it does work pretty fine. Now this big circle between two brackets is called a skid indicator or a trimble. Trimba! The trimble indicates the amount of side acceleration your aircraft is currently having. Always try to keep this thing at the center when you trim your aircraft or you're in the hover mode. Now if you're outside of the hover mode, you should be seeing some sort of circle with three lines on the left, right and top of the circle. This is called flight path vector and it basically shows you jack 
You see, the flight path vector is supposed to show you where your aircraft is going to end up if you keep going this way, but in War Thunder it is pretty much broken and it does not show you anything. Also, shouldn't this be similar to the dotted cross where if you would turn your head around, this symbol should stay on the ground? not following your HMD. For example, if I'm focusing on the base of this tree, as you can see, this symbology is just <laughs> not following it at all. I'm not sure, honestly. Maybe it's something like from a top-down view, but still, it, it just does not make any kind of sense. And Gaijin did this thing almost 12 years ago in their Apache Air Assault, but I guess integrating it into War Thunder is going to be a little bit hard, and it's... Eh. I guess it's nothing really that special anyways. Now let's have a look at this center line. This and this will be your horizon lines. This indicates the horizon relative to the line of sight reticle. Now this is only exclusive to the transition and cruise sight mode. Once you're into the cruise mode, you have two new symbologies added and two of them are removed. First one is the pitch ladder which is an indicator for the aircraft pitch in 10 degrees increments and the bank angle indicator which shows the bank angle of the aircraft. This is the aircraft heading. To put it simply, this shows you which direction your helicopter is pointing at. You have both wide scale and digital readout of the aircraft heading. Underneath it, you have the lubber line. The lubber line is a point of reference for the cruise mode's bank angle indicator. This was all the information you needed for the integrated helmet and display sight system for your helicopter. Oh, I almost forgot. We have the rocket ballistic computer shown as this symbol. On the AH-64D it is pretty much accurate, but on the AH-64A and the Israeli Battlehawk it is just completely broken. And it just basically does not show anything at all until, you know, you bank a little bit to the left and you can clearly see it there. It is not optimized, so... Hopefully, they'll fix it pretty much soon. Now, let's have a look at the cockpits of these helicopters. Basically, you have two types of cockpits that are recently added to Apaches in War Thunder. The early cockpit and then the modernized cockpit. I already talked about which variants of the Apaches receive what type of cockpits. And I also already talked about what are the differences between these two cockpit layouts. Let's start with the most basic one. This will be your cyclic stick. This will be your collective stick. And these two will be your directional control and brake pedals. Now, I'm not sure if Gaijin has some problems with regards to licensing the Huey's label on the Apaches, but the logo on the pedal is missing with the empty space on top. Here are some pictures as the reference in real life. I'm not sure if the Hughes was the only thing that was written on the pedals, because the fact that the Apache's owners were bought by the McDonnell Douglas in 1980s, and later down the line, the McDonnell Douglas itself was purchased again by Boeing in the 1990s, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about that, Chief. Now, this specific picture, I'm not sure what is the source, but hopefully it is going to be in real life. Never mind. Now, of course, we have the classic Boeing seat fabric, and then you have the air conditioner system on both Apaches. As you can see, the vents are currently here and here. Now, some people might actually say like, he, 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 comrade, in my 24 he has a fan, it doesn't need an air conditioning system. Soviet onion strong. Listen here, communist. But Bob, the Soviets were shit. They only used the shitty goddamn fan. Turns out the Mi-24 helicopters not only had air conditioning for the cockpit itself, but also the entire rear cabin in itself. <sighs> Let me be clear. Every individual has its Alex Jones moment, so why not? And plus, let me tell you, as a Middle Eastern, I know the difference between a shitty fan and a goddamn fully fletched out air conditioner. But yeah, those tubes are the air vents. These levers will be your engine power levers, which are not modeled in the game. You have your stowage box, which if you ever tried to hide some of that enemy Intel or your 13 inch MacBook Pro, it is a nice place to store it. On the top left console, you will probably see a familiar face that all of the AH-1 Cobra pilots will recognize. Then you have your fire control panel and the engine RPM, rotor RPM, oil, oil pressure, Oil pleasure, fuck no. Fuel engine turbine gas and engine torque indicator, all of these details over here. Then you have your airspeed indicator, your standby attitude indicator, your centerline MFD, your altitude indicator and your vertical speed indicator. You have your radar warning receiver screen, the accelerometer, and of course your clock. And on the left, you have the countermeasure dispenser section. And even more on the left, you have a warning slash caution panel. And then you have all the bullshit on the right console, which is probably not that important and is used for comms and auxiliary power unit and stuff. Yeah, they're kind of useless. Now you might ask, Bob, what are these buttons on the frame of your cockpit? Now, believe it or not, those are all circuit breaker panels. 
And goddamn, good job at modeling this wire system, Gaijin. Oh man, I love this thing. Now let's have a look at the AH-64D cockpit model. As you can see, most of the cluttered bullshit has been removed and was replaced with two digital screens that basically show everything you need, with some minor backup instruments to help you just in case. Again, like always, you have the engine control, flight stick, pedals, and etc. Then you have the canopy jettison, and no, don't worry guys, it's not an ejection seat, or else the entire media would be like, oh my god, the American... Then you have the APU in both engine fire extinguisher systems. You have two multifunctional displays and a tiny EUFD or enhanced upfront display. Now these two MFTs are supposed to show you a lot of details about this helicopter. Unfortunately, Gaijin hasn't modeled this yet, so we're going to get stuck with the basic presets that Gaijin has provided for us. On the left multifunctional display, we have radar warning receiver screen, a radar screen, the tactical map, the aircraft digital instruments, thermal and TV camera, and on the right multifunctional display, we have the thermal and TV camera and aircraft instruments. Now let's have a look at this screen on top. The enhanced upfront display basically shows you a lot of details, including radio channels, fuel status, and so on and so on. In War Thunder, however, it is just a simple and stretched up map reader that is barely even visible on the screen. And of course, you have the radio comms and iHat storage on the right console. I, I guess. You, you can you can put stash on that. And last but not least, the circuit breaker box on the back seat of the helicopter. Ooh, look at Medkit. I wonder if I can use this goddamn thing to solve my skill issue. Oh damn, classic Boeing seat fabric. Mm mm. I can smell the piss from here. And ladies and gentlemen, this was pretty much it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please consider dropping a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also support me by giving me a super thanks or join my YouTube membership. Ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Bob Dickinson, and thank you for watching.